oh, I got a million, got to get 10, got 10, got to get 100, got 100, got to get five, got five, got to get a billion. If it's cars, you'll never have enough cars. If it's women, you never have enough. You'll be chasing them forever. If there it's you success, go. There you, go. you never can have, never, never get enough, enough for that. Good. I going. realize that. It's like it doesn't stop. It keeps calling you. It's like a drug. It's a hamster wheel. It's a hamster wheel. And it's like you're never satisfied. I will say this. It's easier to think clearer when your bills are paid. Easy for him to have this area of perspective because this bills I paid for a while. You got to find out what that higher calling is causing you to do. Because once you find that, that becomes your purpose. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And we have a reaction video here with J. Cole. For those of you new to the YouTube channel, I do these reaction videos from the lens of an entrepreneur, lens from a faith-based principle, from faith-based millionaire type of conversation to see how people of celebrity status, actors, entertainers go about life and some of the lessons we can learn from them, what to do, and also, what not to do. So we're taking a quick break from Andrew Tate. We're moving here to J. Cole, which my wife is a big fan of his music. So let's take a look at what J. Cole here has to say about a few things, about chasing money, about how he finds himself and doing what he's doing and really appreciating the journey that you are on. So let's take a look here at J. Cole. You want to talk I'm about, good. let's talk about something happy. What is the happiest thing in your life right now? What is the most joyous, <laughs> what is um, the most joyous, bright, not optimistic the most, thing. I that's a big loaded question. Um, yeah, but that's okay. Pretty what general. It's got to be <laughs> Get some specific interviewer. Appreciation. Okay. Appreciation. It don't sound big, but it's big. Yeah. Like appreciating everything. I didn't do that before. This whole five year journey, I didn't do that. Right now, I'm making sure, like, I, I'm taking the time to be like, yo, I'm on Angie Martinez show. Like, oh, stop. I it. bought an album when I was like, when I <laughs> Why was. Why you always yeah. stop? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm making sure that I, because there's no guarantee that you're going to get this back. Oh man, I, I, I love that thought process because when much is given, much is expected. Also at the same time too, when much is given, also it can be taken away. You just never know exactly when your opportunity, your door opens up. Yet at the same time too, you don't know as well when some opportunities do close because they do. And you got to maximize it while you're in it. So therefore you're ready for the next step. You're ready for the next move. Just don't sit there and marinate, just kind of sit in the same cycle. So, you know, large reason why a lot of people don't get to where they want to go is because they lack gratitude, they lack appreciation. They always talk about what they don't have. They don't talk about, you know, uh, this life sucks and blah, blah, this country sucks and all these different things that I don't have versus saying, I'm thankful of where I'm at today. I'm thankful of the talent that I have that I can grow and hone and perfect. I'm glad of the relationships that I have that lead me to other relationships that will serve my greater good, my greater purpose. But thankfulness, gratefulness, appreciation is a huge evolution of somebody that becomes somebody and also continues to evolve. And I took that for granted on like the the, the mixtapes and the yeah. albums. It's like I was like, you know, just so caught up with career, career, career. Where am I at? What are mm. they saying about me? Oh, they not gonna put me here? They really gonna leave me out work? All right, <laughs> I'm gonna show them. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, boom. Never taking the time to be like, yo, you just did Angie. Like, yo, you just put out an album. Yo, you just did David Letterman. Yo, you just, so, so like, that's how I'm living my life right now. There's a quote that says, the only reason to look back is to see how far you've come. And that, again, goes back into being grateful and appreciating your journey. I like, appreciating my friends. That's a happy way to live. Family. Oh, it's so much better. It ain't, when you've been in the habit of not doing that, it takes work. I'm not saying I've mastered it and perfected it. But I know that ultimately, that's what the whole album is about, basically. Mm -hmm. is, is, we didn't even talk about it. By the way, what's your favorite J. Cole song? Your favorite J. Cole song? Put it in the comment section. But I'd love to know what type of music you're listening to from J. Cole. But that's, what, that's what the album is about. We did talk about it because all of it really goes back it goes to the album. Back, right, it right. really does. But it goes, so the album is, is saying basically what I'm telling you right now. What I realize is like the, the monetary, the material, even the success and like the things that you, put your, you place your importance on uh -huh. never can satisfy you and ever make you happy because they never end. There's never, you can never, there's no amount of money that will ever make you stop if money is what you care about. You'll keep going. Oh, I got a million, gotta get 10, got 10, gotta get 100, mm -hmm. got 100, gotta get five, got five, gotta get a billion. If it's cars, you'll never have enough cars. If it's women, you'll never have enough. You'll be chasing them forever. If there it's you success, go. There you, go. you never can have, never, never get enough, enough for that. Good. I going. realize that it's like, it doesn't stop, it keeps calling you, it's like a drug. It's a hamster wheel. It's a hamster wheel, mm -hmm. and it's like you're never satisfied. Okay, now with that being said, does that mean you can't be ambitious? Does that mean you can't set a goal and, and hit it and do the work necessary to hit it? Listen, I, I look at income as a reflection of impact. 
if you're really making an impact, you're really making a difference, guess what you should naturally be doing? A byproduct of it is finances. Now, some of you guys say, oh, no, I make an impact in different ways. It doesn't show up in my monetary gain. True. But if you're really making an impact, you're really making a difference. A lot of people are using what you've created, whether it's your work, your music, your your, your product, your, your the widget that you've invented, that should show up in revenue. So the more people that you're impacting should also reflect in your cash flow. So when you're looking at a lens of King Solomon, he said something in Ecclesiastes, reminds me of this thought process here because King Solomon was known as the richest and wisest king who ever lived. And towards the end of his reign, towards the end of his rule as a king, he started realizing that his pursuits were all for nothing. It's in Ecclesiastes, the book after Proverbs in the good book, and it goes like this. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Pretty profound statement right there. But with that being said, it doesn't mean you can't be ambitious. That doesn't mean you can't hit goals and pursue them. The reason why I like money as a marker, because it also defines you as the impact that you're making, how you're scaling and making an impact. So therefore you crack open the next level of potential that you may have too as well. So it's not necessarily the money that you're chasing, the pursuit of greatness, the pursuit of the potential that's being unlocked. Listen, when I look down upon from heaven and people are putting me in the ground, I want people to tell each other, man, Matt, he gave it everything he had. He went to his deathbed giving it everything he had. He cracked open as much potential in his life that anybody can crack open. Now, that's what drives me. I mean, I might drive you. And I'm not asking for you to like what I like or pursue what I pursue. You got to find out what that higher calling is causing you to do. Because once you find that, that becomes your purpose. Through the process of money coming along the way too as well. But if you place your importance on this, which is like appreciation, appreciation love, you know, it's like that. For me, my driver, in addition to appreciation and gratefulness above that, is doing what I do to make a difference. I want to make sure that if I come across somebody, somehow, some way, they're better after leaving me than before when they found me. That is, that is enough. Mm. There's enough of that in everybody's life right now if they just took the time to look. In my life, I just took the time to look around, people that's around me, the things that are around me, like the, the, the blessings I have. And that goes for everybody. The homeless man on the street can still wake up and go, man, I'm alive. I got my limbs. I got my limbs. I got yeah. my fingers. <laughs> like, my man just gave me a dollar. He didn't have to do that. Like, you know what I mean? It's like he he has things that he can appreciate. And, and we can, if we look for those things, to those things for happiness, mm. then it's attainable. If we look to the other things for happiness, it's never attainable. And that's what, the, to me, that's what this whole conversation was about. And that's what that album was about. It's like we, we place in our importance as a country, as a, Get the country, because that's whack to me too. As a world, we placing our importance on the wrong things. We've let the system in the world tell us that these things are important. The new, oh, you got the you got the flat screen joint, but you ain't got the 16 inch. <laughs> right. You got the 16 inch, yeah. but you ain't got the 16 inch. By the way, that's true. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, I agree with here. But with that being said, I've been on both sides of money. I've had money, and I've not had money. And I'll tell you this: I'd rather have a life with money. But I also understand the difficulty it was for me to come up to as well. As a single father, three kids I was responsible for, trying to get a business up off the ground. And I will say this, it's easier to think clearer when your bills are paid. It's easier to think clearer and make decisions about the future when you got some savings. It's easier to think about what you want in your life when the pillow is soft at night because you're not worried about making money immorally or crossing somebody. Because you know, oftentimes people think that in business or in sales, that somebody, in order for you to win, that somebody's got to lose. And I want you to know that there's professions out there, there's businesses out there, there's industries out there, there's win-win situation, win-win-win situation. First of all, the client wins, the person that runs the business wins, and the vendor that manufactures the product wins or the service that provides it wins. There's triple win situations. And I believe that we are in a universe of immeasurable resources. There's tons of money that's out there. If you follow a higher power, if you follow the good book, you listen to the man upstairs, you, you realize that he created everything, that you're a son of a king, that you're a son of a guy that owns everything on earth, that, that listen, if you are a son of a king, you're from not necessarily of material wealth, but an abundance, not scarcity, that you realize it's just a matter of you then 
creating yourself and putting yourself in a position to attract those things and build upon those things and compound those things, make a difference so therefore people pay attention to you and the things that you're doing is making an impact. Money then is a byproduct of all that. And so you set up at your pursuits, you set up what you want to do, put yourself in a position of always making sure that, yeah, money is an important thing. It's there, it's gonna be there, but there's nothing wrong with saying, I wanna be in this position, therefore I don't have to worry about money. Whatever that is, if this income level is 100,000 a year, 200,000, and by the way, more people making $128,000 a year are feeling more and more broke today. People making $250,000 a year are feeling more and more broke today. Check out this article right here. People are feeling broke at the 100,000, 250,000 income level due to interest rates rising and inflation. So therefore the reality, I'm, J, I'm glad Jay Cole can say this because he's got, he's got money, he's got royalties, he's got, he's got passive income coming in. It's easy for him to have this area of perspective because this is bills I paid for a while. But for the common Joes like me and you, that came from nothing, he came from nothing. But if common Joes like you are just like struggling to make ends meet, you got to find a way to have your income far elevate above your expenses. So therefore you don't raise your expenses. You got to figure out the life that you want. The, the prices that you're willing to pay for the lifestyle that you want to live, make sure your income is way up here. And then you're in control of it, not anybody else. It's exhausting it's too, exhausting, by the way. Man. It's exhausting. Tiring. But the world have, tells us that. Do you have do you have things? Were you always like that? No, right? What do you mean? Like, do do you have things? You know, like I know you were saying that um, you know, shame on you if you, that watch is too expensive. This people. No, I hungry. got those things. But you got things. That's like what that, made me right? say it. Because then when I got them, I'm like, man, what am I doing? Like, why? <laughs> so you got some expensive watches, Yo, for sure. and some jewelry. I got expensive watches, jewelry. I don't have. I, I sold By the way, uh, my recommendation for you: go buy yourself an exotic one day. Get yourself an expensive suit one day. Get yourself that watch one day. Go with yourself on a trip one day. I, I tell you this: once you get it, and you thought it was all this in a bag of chips, you'll feel the same way that J. Cole feels. Probably one of the most annoying things I have by owning Rolls Royce is that unless the place has valet, I don't want to park and I'll go eat there. Why? Because you just can't park in a regular spot when you go somewhere to eat. You get an exotic car, you get a Lamborghini, you get a Ferrari, you get a Rolls Royce. You just can't park where everybody else parks. You got to park way away where no one's going to park right next to you because you don't want to catch any door dings because getting door dings out of those things. And by the way, a lot of jealous cats out there too as well. You just can't park right next to everybody else. And so you have to have it valet if somebody's watching it all the time. So watches, same thing too. Close it, get that out of your system. I sold my car. I had a range at one point. I sold it. I ride a bike now through. Uh, Do you really? Do you too, have no cars? I don't have a car. No, no. Wow. No more car, just a no bike. No car, yeah. What but about your jewelry? What'd you do with that? It's still there. It's still there. And I look at it, you know, I wear it. Yeah. It's just that I, I got it for the wrong reasons. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's, it's, it don't mean nothing, man. It don't really mean anything. It didn't mean anything when I got it. It was just from being a kid. My cousin had jewelry, and I wanted to be like him. I want to see it. Yeah. Oh, and Jay got jewelry. Oh, man, I want to be icy like that. I remember the first time I seen, uh, not the first time I seen Drake, but I seen Drake at a show. Um, it was in, like, Toronto. It was a Jay-Z show, and he came out. By the way, we had a reaction video here to Chad Ochocinco. Uh, the coolest thing he was saying is the coolest thing about having money and making money, you can buy a lot of fake stuff, and everybody thinks it's real. So, so if you got to do that, by the way, we interviewed Deion Sanders because he was prime time. He said, listen, all that jewelry that I had on me, that was marketing, but that's not really me. So I get it if you're in a position of marketing, you're in a position of advertising, you got to show a certain image. Sadly that people look at those things, but uh, I'm not saying that it's right, but people do it. That sadly people judge a book by its cover. But if they're going to do that and it's going to cost you marketing opportunities or business opportunities or not, I'd rather you then dress up that cover as best you can if people are going to judge a book by its cover. Because I'm not going to assume that everybody follows the same values and principles as you. So if you're going to dress the part, look the part, do the part so you can get the part, my recommendation, do it. It doesn't mean that it's about you, that that's what you stand for. I'm just saying you do those things to market yourself, to put yourself out there, but that necessarily doesn't define you. And then, mind you, he's like on fire because so far gone was out. I think I just had to warm up out I was coming out opening for Jay, and then I, I was, when I met him, he had the Roly. Oh God, Roly's so cold! Like <laughs> cold Roly's so crazy, yeah. and you want it like you see things. It's marketing. He yeah. wasn't marketing it to me, but somebody marketed it to him. That like, by the way, Roly's a great investment too, as well. I mean, we got some shots here of me going to uh, Doctor Gold's here. 
trading in one of my rolls to get another one because my Rolex actually increased in value. And I upgraded my Rolex to another one. I see. I loved it. I mean, it's not only that do I love it, it looked good, but it's also going to increase in value too as well because watches and jewelry is another form of wealth. It's another form of transference of wealth. Instead of wearing carrying gold bars, you, you wear jewelry. So it's another form of wealth if you look at jewelry as a uh, appreciating asset. Like Rolex poor and they're like, I seen it on him or seen it on Jay and like, oh, gotta have one. You know what I mean? Like, Did you get one? For sure, I yeah. got a few. <laughs> yeah, you got a few, right. Right, mm -hmm. so it's like, but I've hit the point in my life now where it's like I'm a grown man and I realize like, I'm questioning why did I want it? Mm. And then what did it do for me when I got it? You know what I mean? And it's cool to have whatever. But what, what good feeling it is to have that goal and accomplish it, J. Cole. So it may not be necessarily you getting the Rolex. You decide to say, I set a goal, and that byproduct of me setting that goal is me excelling in my field, excelling as an artist, excelling in my business to get these type of things. Along the way, you pick up nice things. Nothing wrong with that. You can right, have you're not judgmental you want. of somebody. Not who, judgmental at all. Yeah, yeah, have, just, have your things, but don't place your value on those things. Correct. Like, don't place value Good on for you, man. It's, it's just a thing. The it's right real. message not for real. our like, community. It's real is like something spiritual, something like a connection with somebody, like a, a love is real. Mm. I'm realizing that as I'm getting older. That love, mm. relationship love, family love, mother, mm. son love, like I'm realizing how important that is. Like, yes. Like, just to become successful, I had to like, in my mind, I had to like, just put my head down. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not calling my mom as often. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, it's like my family, my brothers, like, man, I'm, I'm blessed enough to have these people alive and well. It's like, I want to better those relationships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because those are the rewarded things. As I wrap up, I'm thinking about my parents. I'm thinking about my in-laws and how we've retired them. Because my wife and I, we set goals. And one of our goals is to take care of people that we love and care about. And I remember the times that we delayed gratification, the times that we delayed taking vacations, the times we delayed hanging out, the times we delayed going to the movies to put the sweat equity in between my wife and I to actually build a business. Along the way, our children were able to watch us. They were able to watch us in our very best. They were able to watch us in game. They were able to watch us doing our sport in business. And they were able to watch us in negotiations. I remember last night at literally one o'clock in the morning, my son and I, he's 11 years old, were, you know, I got home late last night and uh, you know, we, we had our meeting last night and we're smoking stogies. I got home at 12 o'clock. I, I felt hungry. Here I am at one o'clock in the morning, my son wakes up. We're, we're, we're just having a conversation at one o'clock in the morning. And he says, dad, I want, cause I was, I was watching a masterclass cause I was, you know, looking how to do better in certain topics and masterclass is an app I use. And so what I was showing him that even at one o'clock in the morning, I'm still learning. Anyway, he says, he goes, Poppy, save that video for me because I want to learn from that when I create my YouTube channel. I said, really? Well, what type of YouTube channel do you want to create? He said, well, eventually I'm going to create a YouTube channel to teach people about money and life insurance. I'm like, what are you talking about money and life insurance? Well, where do you get that from? Because I hear you guys all the time in the car and what well, you guys talk about at the office and your conferences and blah, 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 blah. So it's interesting how he's picking up the language of wealth and accumulation of finance and resources. So therefore you, you can serve a greater purpose more than just money. So when I'm looking at our parents, looking at our family, you gotta, you gotta take care of, you gotta get past the survivability phase. I talk about four stages of money all the time. The first phase is survivability. Second phase is status. Third phase is freedom. Fourth phase is purpose. And the first, I think right now, J. Cole is in a purpose phase, but he got past status, he got past survivability, he got past freedom, he's in purpose phase. And the faster you get back to purpose phase, the more you figure out what you stand for. So that being said, I love knowing your thoughts, your questions, your feedback, you agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. Who else would you like for us to do a reaction video? Should I go back to Andrew Tate? Or is there other celebrities, A-list celebrities, athletes that you want me to react to in terms of the lens of leadership and personal finance and being a faith-based millionaire? That being said, guys, if you found value in this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos here, please consider hitting subscribe and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next videos. We've got a couple other reaction videos here for you to check out. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.